Hello everyone, I'm Lori with Behavior Education at Spirit Keeper Animal Sanctuary. Welcome to Corn Snake Corral for Thursday, November 10th, 2022. This week I'm going to go over a scientific paper on body condition scoring in corn snakes. It was published in 2021 in the Journal of Animal Physiology and Animal Nutrition. And this is going to give you a glimpse into what my patrons get to do once a month if they choose. We do a research coil every month where ahead of time I give people a podcast to listen to, a video to watch, or a scientific journal article to read. And then during our Zoom live session, I do a brief overview of whatever the subject of our discussion is. And then everybody gets to ask questions and we talk about it. So we're going to talk about this paper on body condition scoring in corn snakes. And if it's something that you enjoy and would like to see more of, consider becoming a patron because we do this once a month and that is open to all of my patrons. So the location of this research and the subjects involved in this research were 22 corn snakes, Pantherophis guttatus, at the Alfangstaschen for Reptilian in Munich. That's in Germany. In English, that stands for the Reptile Rescue Center, or RRC. And three veterinarians examined each of these 22 snakes using the body condition chart that we're going to go over here. Researchers during this study looked at body condition index versus body condition score in these 22 corn snakes. A body condition index is something that requires a mathematical formula to come up with. So it's residuals from a regression of body mass on body length these things are calculated with a mathematical formula. And so you're getting an objective number of all of the animals that you assess this way. However, as you might imagine, it's very difficult to calculate in the field. It isn't very fast. It's gonna require at least a ruler or measuring tape and a scale, perhaps other instruments in order to get this done. It can give false information in the case of a snake that has a larger than normal body mass. That means they're heavier than they normally would be. And that might be because they've recently eaten a large meal or it's a female with eggs or the animal has a tumor or an abscess, which is causing them to weigh more than they actually would if that wasn't going on within their body. And that can skew these results because the calculations are done based on a formula that incorporates the weight of the animal with other measurements. The body condition score, on the other hand, is a little bit more practical method of determining body fat or evaluating the body fat on a corn snake because it uses visual assessment and manual palpation. That means that the veterinarian or keeper can visually look at the animal and feel the animal and make a determination based on a chart you're gonna see as to what condition the animal's in. The issue with this is it's subjective. So while we're using mathematical calculations in the body condition index method, this method is more subjective because it is based on what the individual assessor thinks the body condition score is. However, the chart has been developed to help guide assessors. And if you repeat it on the same animal several times and you use multiple assessors or the same assessor repeats it multiple times on the same animal, you can come up with a pretty accurate body condition score. It's easy to obtain with pets, it's quickly done, and it doesn't require any mathematical formulas or special measuring tools. But again, it is subjective versus objective. The chart you see below is the body condition scoring system that researchers in this paper based on manual palpation of the spine, manual palpation of the area between the vertebral, spinous, and transverse processes, the ribs, and the neck of each corn snake. So if you look at this table, it is based on a score of one out of five, two out of five, three out of five, four out of five, five out of five. So one out of five is emaciated, five out of five would be obese. So they're looking at the spine, as far as the spinous process, I'll show you what that is in just a minute. They're looking at the spine as far as between the spinous processes and the transverse processes. They're looking at the area around the ribs and whether the ribs are visible or palpable or not. And they're looking at the neck and the shape of the neck. So I am going to show you a little bit of spine anatomy, and then I'm gonna show you a chart that I came up with that might explain this a little bit easier. So the spinous process are the parts of the vertebra that stick up. And if your snake, if you're looking at your snake from the side, so I've overlaid a little picture of normal here, this is my snake. And if we were looking at him just as we see him 
in this picture, looking at him from the left or right side, the spinous processes are the parts of the vertebra that stick vertically up and down. And the transverse processes are those parts of the spine that go horizontal or stick out from the spinal column left to right. And then of course the ribs are just like our ribs that you can feel if you touch your torso, they come off the spine and they protect the abdomen and all of the internal organs from outside pressure or from concussive forces or from getting squished basically. The, the ribs are to protect the internal organs and so you see those here. And then if we were looking at the snake with the snake facing us, so the head of the snake is crawling directly towards us, again, the spinous processes would be sticking straight up and down like a shark fin, and the transverse processes would be sticking out horizontally to the, from the sides of the spine like wings. So I came up with this chart based on the researcher's chart because I thought it might be easier for you guys to visualize. So the body condition score is at the top. One is complete emaciation, and then five is obesity. And it goes from one, two, three, four to five. However, researchers in this paper said, if the snake wasn't quite a number one or quite a number two, they had some half steps in here. So let's say you're looking at the spinous process. That's the part that sticks up vertically. And you can visually see it sticking up and making the skin push out, or you can feel it really easily without putting any pressure on, then those are that's sharp. And that's an emaciated snake. You shouldn't see or feel the spinous processes sticking almost up through the skin. And then number two would be, those are easily seen and felt, but it's not quite as obvious as a one. If there's something in between, they're saying they're calling it a one and a half. And if we look at the other end, let's say that the spinous processes are not palpable with normal pressure, but if I really, really push down hard, I can feel them there under the skin. Then they're calling it a four and a half because obese would be no matter how hard you push on that snake's back, you're not feeling the spine. It's so obese and got so much fat around it. So if the spinous processes are sharp, that's emaciated. If they're easily felt and seen, that's a two. If they're palpable, that's in the middle, that's a three. If they're palpable, but only if you push down and you start squeezing with pressure, that's a four. And if you just can't feel them at all, no matter how hard you're squishing on that spine, the snake is obese. So that is feeling for the actual bone. Now this area between the spinous and transverse processes is going to be muscle and tissue between the hard bony parts of the spine that you're visually looking for and you're feeling for. So if that area is concave with no musculature palpable or visible, the snake is emaciated and concave means sunken in. And you'll see that in a picture from the paper that I'll share with you in a minute. So if the spine is sticking up and the area on either side of the spine is sunken in, that is emaciated. There are two back muscles on either side of the spine, the longissimus dorsi, and you should be able to feel those and they should be toned. And so if you're not feeling or seeing those and you just have indentations like ditches on either side of the spine, that's emaciated. Number two would be if you've got that concave area, those little ditches, but you can feel some muscle, that would be a two. If it's perfectly straight, that would be a three. If the musculature is prominent, which means now it's kind of starting to stick up, then we're starting to get a little chubby. And if it's convex or completely, the muscles on both sides of that spine are sticking up and you might see now instead of the spine, you've got like a ditch going down the middle between those two long back muscles. That's because so much fat has built up on either side of the spine. It's causing a little indentation in the middle of the snake's back. Or you may see, depending on the species, and in corn snakes, it sounds like they're saying that it may look more like a loaf of bread, like the whole thing is just so round that there's no indentations anywhere, and no matter how much you squish, you're not feeling any bones in there. That would be obese. So the same with the ribs, a one would be if they're sharp and prominent and you can easily see, and feel, see the ribs and feel the ribs, that is emaciated versus I can't feel the ribs no matter how hard I push, 
and I can't see them, that's obese. And then if the neck is slender, that's a one to two. If the neck is straight, that's a three. And if the neck is broad, in fact, in a corn snake, let's say the neck is broader than the head, that would be starting to get obese. Now, in this paper, the authors are saying that ideal was two and a half. So I'm not sure why they didn't say three, since three is right in the middle between one and five. But for this particular paper, these authors said that ideal was 2.5 for the corn snakes. Now here's a photo provided in the actual paper. This was the most emaciated corn snake in their group of 22 with a body condition score of 1.5 out of five. And if you look here, you can see, like, I, I can't touch this snake, but I can see that the spine is prominent. Like, visually, I can see the spine sticking up. And you can see that there is no muscle on either side of the spine. It's sunken in on both sides of the spine. So if this was an obese snake, it would be the opposite. Both sides of the spine would be really raised. And you might see where the spine is. There's a little ditch or you might just see the whole thing is rounded like a loaf of bread, that would be obese. But this is emaciation, and they scored this 1.5. This was the fattest snake in their study, which was a 3.5. So remember, five is obese, four is just below obese, and they scored this one a 3.5. So they didn't actually have any obese animals that got up to the number five level in their study. But if you look at the head of this corn snake and the neck, you can see that there's really no differentiation between where the neck ends and the head starts or the broad neck. You should see, at least be able to see some differentiation where the head ends and the neck starts and then it moves into the body, at least in this species of snake. And that would be the same in lots of the python species too. The head should be a triangle or there should be a definite spot where the head ends and the neck starts and if that's absent the snake is obese if that is too prominent like the head is way bigger than the neck and the rest of the body then the snake might be emaciated but this they scored as a 3.5 they took these 22 corn snakes and they did a comparison to the pre-existing body condition index that's used for snakes and this proposed body condition scoring system. So they calculated the body condition index, the BCI mathematically on all the snakes. And then they also used their body condition scoring system. They had three veterinarians do the body condition scoring using the chart. And they had each of the three veterinarians do it on each of the 22 snakes. And so the authors concluded that the BCI and the BCS, so the body condition index and the body condition score correlated to each other, and that you could use a body condition score to get a fairly accurate account of body condition and evaluate the fatness of the corn snake. They had one snake that was carrying eggs that was in the study and they actually threw that animal out. They didn't literally throw that animal out, but they didn't end up using that animal for the study because the fact that the animal was carrying eggs threw off the BCI or the body condition index because the snake was weighing more due to carrying eggs. And that excessive weight didn't correlate to the actual body condition, you know, muscling and fat deposits the snake has, which is why they're saying the body condition scoring in cases like that would actually probably be more accurate. So they're saying the body condition score spreadsheet will facilitate the recognition of obesity and emaciation of the corn snake, Pantheropus gutatus, for veterinarians. And you're not going to need scales, you're not going to need measuring tapes, you're not going to need a calculator, you're not going to need formulas to do mathematics. You're just seeing and feeling the animal, you're writing down the numbers for each of those areas. So like for the neck, you'd write a number down, one to five. For the ribs, you'd write a number down, one to five. For the spinous processes and the transverse processes, and that area in between, you're going to write a number down, one to five. For the actual bony structure of the spine, you're going to write a number down, one to five. And then you're going to add all those numbers up, and you're going to divide by four, because we're looking at four areas, right? We're looking at the ribs, the neck, the area between the spinous processes and the transverse processes, 
and then we're looking at the bony part of the spine and does that protrude or not so you're looking at four areas each one's getting assigned a number you add all those up and then you divide by four that gives you the overall body condition score if you repeat that a few times on the same animal you can average your results and if you have more than one person do it on the same animal you could average all those results again you're not going to need measuring tapes you're not going to need scales you're not going to need mathematical calculations well thank you so much for watching let me know if you would like to see us do some actual scoring of corn snakes here and until next time please remember to always be kind and love your animals.